friends. We are all here today, this morning, with Morning Coffee for the Soul, here at Kardec Radio. I am trying to share my video here on my personal uh, computer as well, so just give me a few moments and... One, one second, and I will post. Just one second, please. Just ask for patience for one second, and I'm going to share this video. On the timeline, and I am posting. Thank you for your patience, and we are going to begin our topic today. So we're going to talk about the topic of this too shall pass. Who has heard this very uh, famous and attributed to so many different uh, people and uh, cultures? But again, we all have heard this too shall pass, especially when we hear about Chico Xavier and uh, Emmanuel. This one time when Chico asks and he's going through a very tough time and he's going through a lot of anguish, a lot of hurt, and he asks, uh, if his spiritual guide, who is Emmanuel, to give him, to ask Mary of Nazareth, Mary, and come up with a, a, a recipe to dealing with all his ang uh, anguish, his pain, all of the suffering that was happening. And Emmanuel comes back and says, Shiku, there is a recipe, and Mary of Nazareth, Mary, mother of Jesus, has uh, giving me something for you to write down exactly the recipe for all your anguish, all your pain, all your suffering, everything that you're going through. So Shiko gets right on the paper and pen, uh, pa pen and paper, and he's about to write down whatever Emmanuel says. So Shiko says, please tell me what she says. I'll write it verbatim. And Emmanuel says, this is the message for Mary. This too shall pass period. So a long story short, if we really think the essence of everything that happened in that small episode where Shiku asked for the recipe for peace, he wanted peace of mind. And the recipe was this little sentence where Mary says, this too shall pass. Now I want to ask all of the, uh, all of my friends here who are online, if I ask you to go back and tell me your New Year's resolution, and again, from time to time, we all like to do New Year's resolutions at the end of the year. So if I ask you what your New Year's resolution was in 2003, can you tell me what your New Year's resolution was? 2003. We are in 2018, so quite a long time ago. Most people will not be able to tell uh, or say anything as far as what their New Year's resolution was that year. But at that time, those resolutions were things that you really wanted to happen. Most likely problems that you had that you wanted to solve, things that weren't working out so well and you wanted them to come to a resolution. So that is exactly what this, that, this too shall pass compasses because when we say this too shall pass when we look back in our lives everything has passed and most of our problems we don't even remember what they were and if we do you are in an entire different situation right now it's no longer the same problems that afflicted you 15 years ago that are afflicting you now it could be the same nature of the problem but things have been different now if it's a health problem, you have tried different treatments. You have lived for the past 15 years. You have met new people. So it is not, nothing remains the same. Everything do pass. The, you know, everything will pass. If it's someone that passed away, someone that discarnated, and you say, well, Deborah, you know, that there was no solution for that. Well, it depends on whose eyes you're asking. What optic are you looking? Because that person may not be with us anymore, and we say, well, that too passed. You see, when we look in the, in, under those optics that everything does passes, and so do we. We also will pass 
through this earth to another one. And at the end, it's not going to matter all of the problems that you imagined yourself to have. Most of our problems, and I'll tell you this, this is not to for anyone to feel bad and say, oh, you're invalidating my problems. Not at all, because everyone's problems are very real to them. The only thing is research, and I'm talking about hard research. And if you go on Google, um, just about everything um, that we go through, and if you want to go through different studies, everything that we actually worry about, most of the things do not even come to uh, to be real. Studies show that 40% of our thoughts, 40% of our thoughts are about the past. 40% of our thoughts then have nothing to do with anything that we can do anything about. So um, they passed already. 30% of our thoughts have to do with things that will never come to be. So 30% of our thoughts are anxieties that will never happen. The other thoughts that we have, a lot of them are about futile things, things that really don't matter. So it's not that we're even imagining problems, but things that don't matter. And research shows that about 0.8% is really worries that deserve attention. So think about how much waste we produce in our minds of things that only really 0.8 is worthy of really uh, not worrying but attention so why because almost half of everything we think about already passed there is nothing we can do about it now when I asked about your resolutions is to show and it's to prove and I remember this because when I had a very very real problem a few years ago um, today I look at it and it's no longer and when I start to make this connection that everything that I actually worried about, most of it actually never came to, to, to happen. And the others, they're already resolved and new things have come up. So everything that we think about eventually will pass. All our pain, all our problems. The only thing that does not pass is our progress. Because the only thing that does not pass and it's guaranteed to always exist and always have existed is God. And when we know that we are all walking in progress towards reaching his companionship and in its entirety of time, then we know that the only thing that we really should uh, feel is um, empowerment to know that sadness will pass, but happiness will become more and more prominent in our lives. Even if we don't believe that, because when we see the world the way it is, we may tend to see the evil that exists instead of all these new bloomy flowers that are coming up all over the place. And it is our choice. I'm going today to invite a friend who has a very interesting life story. And she's going to come up on camera here with us, Abby Sher. And she's going to, for a few minutes, give a live real example of her life in which she actually uh, went through something that at the time she thought would never pass and it was full of pain for her. But with spiritism, with this knowledge of everything passing and us being just a little speck here that will shine and then it won't shine in this place and it will be born in a different place shining there. It takes a lot of pain off us. Now, I wanted to tell you what the best definition of patience, because of course, this too shall pass, is closely aligned with patience. Patience is not really um, waiting. That's two different things. Waiting and patient, being patient are two different things. Patience is the act of hard work while you wait. You see that? Patience is the act patient person is actually working towards their goal. They don't wait for nothingness. They don't take a position of doing nothing and accepting situations the way they are. That is has nothing to do with being patient. A patient person usually is a person is a person that actually works the hardest. Yet it has the serenity to understand that it all will happen as you work. 
You see the very difference when people think that patience, being patient, is crossing your arms and waiting? It isn't. It's working hard towards your goal. That is, the, that is why it's so important to have goals and set timelines and set um, stepping stones to achieve your goals. Because then patience is, it's really understanding that everybody has their own time, their own ways of doing things. And the more confident you are about your plans, the outcome of your plans, the more patient you will be. You see why patience is closely aligned with faith. Because what is faith? Everybody has a different, um, a different, I guess, you know, you can, you can say whatever it is that faith is to you. To me, faith is surrender and it's trust. You can trust someone, but if you don't surrender, then it's not a complete uh, act of faith. But if you surrender without trust, it's a dangerous proposition as well. When you trust in God and you surrender to his will, then you, 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 you start feeling confident. You know things will happen. You begin to feel strong. And then with that, you begin to work hard towards your goal. And you become a patient person. It's again, the more faith you have, the more patient you will be. Yet, patience is the act of hard work towards your goal while you wait. Isn't it? It seems like a little confusing, but it is. If you have to, just as I did when I was studying the subject, I actually wrote it down to really reflect it. And when, once I wrote it down and I looked at what was written, I understood what patient was. So when I see someone that is very self-confident, when, when someone is confident about their plans, I know that they are going to be patient. Again, patience is not waiting. It's actually working very hard with serenity, with faith. Again, trust and surrender. Surrender doesn't mean crossing your arms. Surrender meaning means being like water. And Bruce Lee used to say, you know, when people ask how he fought all these people that were huge and strong and all of that, and he says, be water. He says, be like water. Come touring all the obstacles, not fighting against them. So you see, that's what working hard is all about. It's not working hard in a sense that you're going against everything. You're going with the flow of your problems, learning about them, and going as they happen. And that is a requirement of surrendering and having patience. Now, I'm going to see if I can bring Abby here to camera. So let me find where she is here with us. And I think it'll be great for us to hear what she has to say. Um, okay, I am going to bring her and I think She'll speak with us for about seven minutes to her story. I hope we all enjoy what she has to say. And I see it's Addie. And anyone who wishes to uh, be brought to camera sometime with a question, please feel free to request here, um, either on my Facebook, my personal Facebook, or here in the comments. Sometimes we do have a, a, a question that we want to, or a comment that we want to bring to everyone. And then um, it's a pleasure to do. I see the little button saying adding um, Abby. So let's hope that she is getting that request and she can be brought into camera. In the meantime, I want to ask you guys, what hasn't passed in your life? What is a problem that you're having? What kind of pain is in your heart that hasn't passed yet? How long have you had this pain? How long have you suffered with this? Um, Abby, I, I'm just seeing that there is no answer from you. I'm in trying to, I hope on your iPhone. Using an iPhone, okay? Everyone to be able to be added to the conversation. So I see you, Abby. Um, I am adding you. Now we're connected. Great, great. Hi, Abby. Good morning to you. Good morning, Barbara. How are you? Doing great. I'm so happy. Everything worked out. See, yes. we did a little. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Beautiful. So, 
for a few minutes, Abby, this topic of this too shall pass. Um, people sometimes come up and they say, you don't understand the size of my problem or you don't, I don't think there is a faith. I don't think there is anything that will open my eyes or any real people that can really attest to this too shall pass. Right. Um, please tell us a little bit about why you don't believe that is true and that things do pass. Okay. So I ha I'm married. I have a son. He's 23. And I'm going to start with um, difficulty that we had. So, of course, when you have a child, you're very happy, very excited. When he was age two, we noticed we were around some clowns, and he freaked out and took off down the street. And from thereafter, we saw that he had um, very intense anxieties. So besides the anxieties, he also had OCD and anger. It had gotten really tough for a long time, and his child psychologist suggested that we go to the Spiritist Society in Baltimore, which I had no, um, I had nothing, I didn't know anything about it, but I just, blind faith, I just went, because things were so terrible with him, but I held on to a sliver of faith that things would get better, and for a long time, things didn't, but I just hung in there. I went to the center. I got passes, um, read some of the books, and through the troubling time, I just held on to the sliver of faith. Um, his anxieties were so bad that when he was in high school, he did not leave his room when he came home from school because he was so connected to my husband and I. So that was a very rough time. But I held on to my faith and knowing that this too will pass. I didn't know how, but having the faith and knowing that this will pass, as rough as it was, <clears throat> excuse me, so when he was in high school, 11th grade, he said to my husband and I, I want to go away to college. And I said, how is this going to happen? He can't leave his bedroom when he comes home from school. And he said, Mom, I want to do this. So we let him apply to different um, colleges outside of state. He ended up going to Amherst College in Massachusetts. And that's when things turned around for him and for us. And he was very successful in school. We were so proud of him that he was able to leave his anxieties, um, put them aside, and one of the best things he said to my husband and I was that um, he wasn't going to let his anxieties define him as a person. So it took about 11 years, I guess, um, him dealing with his OCD, anger, and his anxieties, us going to the spirit, to the spiritist center in Baltimore, which really helped me, also getting the passes. So for me, I just hung on to that faith, that sliver of faith. I had no idea what was going to happen, but I stayed very positive, even though at the time I felt like I was in a black tunnel, a black hole. But I knew that if I just stuck with him, and helped him along the way that hopefully he was going to come out of his shell, which he did. But it was because of having that hope and staying positive and, of course, doing the things to help him as far as seeing psychologists, also going to the center. At first, it was he was very reluctant. Um, we always had to take the steps because he wasn't, um, 
he didn't like taking elevators. So the best thing that he did say to us now is, Mom, I still have my anxiety, but I'm not going to let them define me as a person. So if you're in that dark tunnel, whatever's happening, I think if you just hold on to that hope and faith and get that support that you need, everything will turn out fine. It may not happen right away, but if you hold on to that faith, it will happen. So now, um, after college, he is now living in Seattle, Washington, and he's very successful as far as with his work. He still has his anxiety, but he figured out a way to navigate through his anxiety. So we're very proud of him, but it did take a lot of work. We didn't snap our fingers and say he was going to go from anxiety to everything being okay. Um, it did. It took a lot of work, a lot of diligence on our part, and I knew that we just had to hang in there and everything was going to be okay. Although I didn't know how, I just knew it. I just had this instinctual feeling that everything was going to be okay, even though it felt like at the time we were going through hell, but I saw that glimmer of light, and I held on to that, and now he's living the life that I never thought he was going to live, um, but we are very, very profoundly proud. What an amazing, and, and I'll tell you, when we're going through those tough times, at times we may have doubt, but when we hold on to our faith, right? When we know that there is that speck of light and right. as, as simple as a seam, we, there always is. And that's the beauty of it. When we work, instead of just concentrating on this huge dark tunnel and we look at that little speck of light, and I always like to say, if anyone ever has ever been in a tunnel, in a dark tunnel, all they need is to turn to, to a little light, a little light. All they have to do is a little, tiny little light, and the whole tunnel is visible. You see the whole, right. all the darkness is gone. Right. And you decided to and look at that little light that God is always offering us. Right. Sometimes we just. Yes. It was. What are you? It, the analogy that I what the, <laughs> what is advice, <laughs> what is your advice to um that's okay what is your advice in your final words to those who are suffering with mental illness especially because it's not something you can clearly make a plan right. for a lot of times we talk about what is your um, optimistic word for those who sometimes cannot have a de definitive plan, but are going through that dark tunnel. They don't know, um, I want to have faith. I want to not, to, to believe that this too shall pass. Right. In the final words, what is your advice? Well, if you do see somebody with a mental illness, I think the main thing is that they get the support that they need and also that the family members can support them and get whatever help they need and just um, stay stick with that person, but they need to get the professional help and they need to forget about the stigma and talk about what's happening, not brush it under the rug, get the help that they need and the family needs to also um, get the support that they need. Thank you, Abby. Thank you so much for coming and sharing this. Such a personal thing, but everyone who hears, in your case, it was 11 years of a lot of hard work. Not just 11 years, the entire time and still up, you know, doing all this right. hard work. Things do pass. They do, you know, become different things. And I'm very happy for your son. Tell him that we all send him a lot of love for him being able to inspire others. So thank you too, Abby. Thank you so much.
And see everyone, this is um, a good story because when we think about what spiritism, what Kardec has brought to us, what Kardec, um, these books and all this knowledge, and here in Kardec Radio, we can go to Kardec Radio and say, I I'd like to learn more about the science, about um, a specific topic. We can all go there and really listen to um, that specific topic, just like this story. So when we have spiritism saying that everything passes, everything in our lives will have a phase that we have to work through that phase. Whatever problem that we have today, just as I asked everyone, what kind of problem you had 15 years ago, exactly, you may not remember. If I tell you, what, where were you on December 2nd, 1978? Most people have no idea. And maybe that day was a day that you were so full of sadness, so full of anguish. Yet, today you do not remember because other things have happened. You see, when we concentrate on the what is happening now, how can I do the best now? How can I really change my life with this day, with this moment? The only moment we can live truly is today. The best that I can do today is all that I can do. And that is the meaning of patience is working hard at what you need to work hard, yet understanding there is a time for everything. We know that, you know, in that beautiful, glorious passage, when it says there is a time to smile, a time to cry, a time to sow, and a time to reap, and a time to... There is a time for everything under the sun. There is a time to live, there is a time to die. But when we make this into our lifestyle, and we say, Everything passes, not the goal of our lives. That will never pass because that is God. So when we know that we're just going to progress, that God is so good that he creates us full of free will for us to do as we wish in our lives. Yet, we, he gives us the only certainty that we need the only assurance that we need that he will be with us along the way and we will progress morally, intellectually, always. That will never pass. How wonderful of a certainty is that given from our creator to us. So today, my friends, let's really concentrate on what pain are you experiencing now and really exercise faith. Exercise faith as to the fact of Trust in God, trust in Him, and then surrender. Surrender that there is knowledge to be gained through whatever it is that you're going through, and it will pass. And in the meantime, the best tools are really the gospel, the study of the gospel. Once you take the gospel according to spiritism and you really study, you will start feeling so much more refreshed with that knowledge that, wow, all of this is such material to my soul, it's such food for my soul, that it will make all this anguish so much lighter. Remember when Jesus says that his burden, right, is so much, the, the burden will be so much lighter with him. That's what he meant. Following his path of trust and surrender, your burden, your, the weight on your shoulders, certainly will be a lot less. Thank you, friends, for this beautiful Sunday morning to be with you, the chance to be here speaking about this amazing topic that this too shall pass, and it will. And if you're happy and you're good and everything is great, you know what? It doesn't necessarily have to pass. You only will achieve more and more enjoyment in your soul as you grow. So happiness and sadness are just different states of humor different states of uh, emotions. This variates throughout our whole lives. But true contentment, true um, this feeling of wholeness, this wholesomeness even, will never pass. It will only grow. So trust and surrender. Thank you. And now I'll say hello to a few friends that are here. Chris is here with us. Hey, Chris, I met him in, in 
he's such an amazing person. I met his mother as well. Great person. Uh, Maybe is here with us. Teresa Castro is saying, I love the little rainbows and the happiness people put in there with their emojis. Adilis Paulo is here. Ivan is watching with us. Uh, Le Souza. Bom dia. She's from uh, Sao Paulo. Bom dia. Good morning. Mara Ferreira is watching. Hi, Mara. She's such an amazing girl, too. She's been working a lot in our center and helping out. And it's so appreciated because I'll tell you, volunteers is, is volunteering is something that we always leave for whatever time I have left. And if people understood how much volunteering um, does for our soul, they would put that with so much more respect that it deserves because it's one of the, the biggest tools that I tell people to even get out of depression, do some volunteer work. Um, Ajila said, Isso tudo passará, which means in Portuguese, this too shall pass. Maybe is here saying good morning, good morning, Abby, of course. Luciano Matezzi is here watching. Good morning, Luciano. G Jen Bueno is here. Rosie is here with us. Sueli Jacob is here. Rodrigo Franci, França. Romulo Oliveira. Neilce dos Anjos. Uh, Chris saying shout out to SSB. Yes. Uh, Betânia Ferreira, Luiz Camargo saying, good morning, my beautiful people. Guilherme Velho is here. Hey, Guilherme is here with us. Hello there. And Bob Dombrowski is here with us. And, uh, okay, you're great, Deborah. Chris is saying, you're great, Chris. We're all great. We all are great. And you know, one thing is when people pay you a compliment, don't brush it off. Embrace it. Embrace compliments. It's such an amazing thing to, to, you know, I see a lot of people saying, you know, when you say, oh, you're great, you look beautiful, um, embrace it, say thank you, and then give back, right? We don't have to, to, to give that, you know, the false modesty, oh, no, I'm not beautiful, I'm not happy. Embrace it. It is so beautiful. If everybody uh, really complimented more, gave more words of love, think about this amazing energy. I never refuse a compliment. Why? Embrace your compliments. If they're sincere compliments, take them. And if they're not sincere, take them too. And give back. So you are all great. Let's remember everything that brings sadness. They're all here. All, these no all this knowledge is here to teach us. It's our best professors. Pain is Mr. Professor. And everything else will pass all the pain. It's needed things. Yet, once we learn the lesson, there is no more need for pain. Thank you, friends. Have a wonderful Sunday. If you all have any kind of questions, any topic suggestions, please put it here in the comments or look for me on Facebook. I'm, I'm there. Deborah Beldewitz. Send me a private message. If you want to be brought into camera, just ask. Okay? Thank you.